All right. All right. All, 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 all right. I still don't know why YouTube is uploading everything super slow. No idea. I need to look into that. I, I don't know what what YouTube is up to, but I'm still uploading yesterday's episode and it's been 24 hours. So clearly, clearly something is funky there. Um, yeah, I don't really know. Hey, Stigius. Rollomancer, what's happening? But yeah, YouTube is acting really weird. Atsuki, how's it going? So we have Wednesday? Wednesday. Not many days left. Uh, until round one is finished. People are starting to scramble. You can see more and more people post. Um, just as a reminder to everyone, make sure to post and label your final entry correctly, where there's no question where which is your final. Because you don't want me to grab a sketch and you go, oh, I didn't post my final. Uh, and you're not going to be judged on your final, so make sure you, you clearly label that it's a final version. And I will make sure to change the original post on the forum the same, and I will notify people on Discord, so on and so forth. Just to make sure, you know, to limit F ups. <laughs> Anyways, I finished this guy. I colored him and redrew him uh, yesterday. Pretty fun. Ended up pretty fun. Cool. Big truck. Cyberpunk big truck guy. I gave him some tanned arms, you know, like a trucker should have, some clear like damage from soldier, Semper Fi, Semper Fidelis on his arm. Uh, so that's how, how Big Truck ended. Pretty cool. Dog tags around his neck, you know, just small, small hints of his past and who he is now. Um, it was a fun exploration of doing a character. Um, so I'm opening the doors for yet another cyberpunk something. Uh, please suggest a cyberpunk something that I should draw. Uh, let's see what 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 comes out of it. I have no idea. Exciting. And as a reminder, again. Deadline is this Sunday coming, 8 p.m. UK, uh, UTC. So make sure you, you have your weekend to paint. Make sure you post it before 8 p.m. UK time on Sunday. Is, any suggestions on what to draw? Let's see. Anything goes. I think first come, first serve. Cyber time traveler. All right, time traveler it is. Time traveler. Okay, so a cyberpunk time traveler. The initial first thought I had is obviously time travel isn't real, or is it real in cyberpunk world? Um, or is it like the whole idea about time travel, right? You can't move in time. Time is, is not, you are a linear, you exist in a linear fashion. You are a three-dimensional being in a 
and you experience time linearly, right? You start as this version and it's like a worm and you end up at that version. That's the, your linear representation in four-dimensional space, like a worm, right? You can't move out of that because you're bound to your physical uh, physicality, right? We are three-dimensional beings. So what if we kind of hack that and we go something more kind of astral, right? Mental, mental time travel rather than physical time travel. So how about some crazy some crazy headgear some person bound like to a chair throne like they can't like they have maybe put in yeah let's uh, let's make them frail so put the character in a wheelchair, you know, like a bad pose, like a Hawkins style kind of corrupted body. And this massive construction. <laughs> we are all time travelers. In, in one direction of time travel, yeah, sure. And uh, one kind of kind of romanticized aspect of like deja vu, uh, which is the sensation of you have experienced the same thing once already, that you like, you know, you know what's going to happen and so on. And, uh, and the romanticized version of that would be, you know, like we are actually time traveling. But uh, like the more scientifically explained is that your brain is lagging. <laughs> it's just that your brain is slightly behind the input. So you're like, oh, I've experienced this. And then your brain is like going haywire and just making th shit up. It's because it's lagging. It has a like ping. <laughs> So that's kind of like a fun, fun way of seeing deja vu, right? It's that we are time traveling, but it's just constructed in our mind rather than uh, actual physical or repetition of time that we have experienced it before. I don't know. <laughs> it's a fascinating subject, regardless. What is deja deja vu when you know like you're gonna say this? I've already used any. I'm gonna say this. Then you're gonna say that, and then we're gonna start fighting. You know, like the the train of uh, events that are gonna occur. What did you just say about my hey? Did <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, Morphia, how's it going? Morphia, Morphia. <laughs> Rolomancer, deja vu come from your brain misinterpreting real time event as a memory. Yeah, that could also be an explanation. But more or less, the, like this, the the most accurate explanation of deja vu is just lag, like your brain is is getting input, but the brain is like, oh yeah, I've known about this, you know, like I've I've experienced this, but it's actually it's just it's it has experienced it, but like slightly off 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 uh, 
uh, in the timing, so you have just experienced it. But your brain is like, Ch -ch -ch -ch, this has happened before. It has. <laughs> Microseconds oh, ago. Oh, yeah. Hey, Frox. Yeah. How's it going? Thank you for that sweet sub. Sub hype. So what if, what if this person, right, has multiple screens on multiple, because time travel, right, can, if we, if we go down the route of time travel being a means of interdimensional uh, travel, as in possible timeline, as in possible um, multi-universe type thing, right? which is theoretically possible um, you know in an infinite universe um, this reality these exact words i'm saying right now ha is being said at the exact same time except the next word i'm saying is going to be banana and instead of boat and that has also happened in an infinite universe <laughs> which is which is crazy you know it's absolutely bonkers but mathematically pl plausible in an infinite universe. Yeah, infinite. Meaning any, any possible outcome has happened in any possible way in all infinity. <laughs> hey, Shatlin Lauf, how's it going? Ritas, is there any proper way? I mean, there is proper theoretically proper way to to hold a pen you can even buy um, practice aid grips to help you position your fingers correctly if you have problems with grip um, but what you should consider when you're doing um, if you're doing a lot of line art is don't I've talked about this on another stream but you got to you got to configure Hello mouse that was interesting So what you got to do is you you configure um here you want to you want to configure this curve so that input, um, you travel, is more like that. So at the end of the pressure, here's the maximum pressure. So that at the end of the curve, is, is you don't need to push that much to get a lot of uh, sensitivity. In. So that way, that way, it gives you a lot more subtlety at the beginning of the value range which means that if you're going to draw lines, you can draw a lot of lines without a lot of pressure so that you can get input on, on the tablet without having to like push the pen in. And when you're pushing the pen in to get a line and you're tensing this part, and because you're tensing this part, you, you're going to break your hand. You're going to get carpal tunnel. And because you're constantly like squeezing the pen, right? So the softer you can be in your hand and draw from the elbow, as in you, you move your hand with the elbow and you don't move like this. <laughs> that could be a nice clip. Um, you're gonna improve the health of your hand and future longevity. That's grip, yeah, exactly. Miguel, how's it going? How's it going, bro? <laughs> Rolomancer, yeah. The problem that I think uh, Trevor had, Trevor Claxton had, was that he did a lot of line art and he did a lot of Kung Fu desk grip on his pen. And he messed up his hands royally. 
and also in this in his instance is that they don't really know what happened to him to his hands and tendons they just gave up they just kind of collapsed and <laughs> not collapsed but they got messed up and he hasn't been able to draw for a very long time because of of that that fact that they just don't know why his hands are broken but they are you know so you want to make sure you maintain a good grip and don't do like like some crazy ass like crunch grip that will break your hand in no time if you want you can go and buy these eight grips that are speci specifically formed to fit your fingers so you can put your fingers in and it's like a glove and it'll force you to have the correct correct hand position or finger position um, but yeah keep to keep your wrist loose and strong and make sure you stretch and so on it'll be good This Bjornman thing is a lot harder than I thought at the start. <laughs> FFS Steven, is your competition locked to Russian IPs? Without proxy, your forum doesn't load for me. Um, you are not the first Russian person who has mentioned this. Um, I am not in charge of the web um, space. I am merely a part of the company or the organization that's running Firestarter and whatever Firestarter is buying, a web hotel, I don't know. But I've, I've commented on this before and they said that's really weird. We have not, um, we have not like isolated Russians. We have not uh, chosen to, to ban certain part IPs. Um, and they have investigated it with their web hotel client. Uh, I don't know why I, Russian IPs are having issues. It's really weird. Um, Firestarter is informed about it. They keep going like, we don't know. <laughs> we have not deliberately frozen access to Russian IPs. So, really weird. So, unfortunately, if, uh, FFS Steven, um, that's all I can give you. You're not the first. Uh, I have informed Firestarter. They are informed, they have looked into it, and they don't understand why Russians are being... Uh, Russian IPs are having a hard time connecting to the thing. Because, because it's a community magazine, originally, right? For the art community. And Russians are a part of the art community. So, I, 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 I mean, th theoretically, there's no point in removing Russians from the... <laughs> from the community, right? Because there's a, ma a lot of amazing Russian artists. So th that's that's not some sort of conspiracy against Russians, not at all. It's some weird, uh, I guess, German web hotel thing. No idea. Yeah, it's really weird. There's some Russians have no problem, and some Russians have a lot of problems I'm not sure why um, but rest assured it's not deliberate and they they have tried to fix it um, but yeah, I don't know today this idea that I'm drawing is very hard to define 
in terms of finding the correct shapes because it's a lot of um, tricky smaller shapes and, and very quite complicated framing. So the other one, the big truck guy, was a lot more straightforward. It was just a big fat guy, you know. The shapes were a lot cleaner and easier to deal with. So now I'm kind of uh, exploring the idea while trying to clean it. So it, it takes a little bit longer. There's a lot of amazing Russian artists. They have that strong Russian art academy background. That's no joke. Some crazy OP powers <laughs> from the Russian art community. Um, Zialin, please uh, explain. Oh, about the drawing. Oh, the drawing, drawing. I get it. I get it. Okay. Um, it it's a lot more subtle. Um, if you think about it like this, the design language here is a lot more complicated. Um, if you would do like, if you, I assume you watched my lecture. Um, I have a memory, a, a vague memory of you doing that, right? And if you think about the napkin test analogy I did um, about um, kind of readability of uh, clean shapes. Um, so in this instance, the, the kind of napkin shape would be the big top with the little guy underneath. Hey, Sketch Tech, how's it going? What up? Welcome back, yo. Hope everything is okay. Right, so like you, you, you would go cylinder at the top, guy underneath on a platform, like a big old mushroom kind of. That, that would be the, the simplified version of this design, right? But it's a lot more intricate and it's a lot more detailed where, where I mean, I mean, this is just a, still a sketch, but the, the basic design language idea behind it is different right the, the, the big fat guy the big fat guy was a, a pair right and that shape was is a lot cleaner a lot more straightforward to execute because the complexity isn't there uh, so what what I need to do in this design is to, that I need to manage a lot more subtle shapes a lot of minor details that informs the whole rather than uh, the opposite side with uh, the big truck guy, where the big shapes inform the whole of the design a lot more, and where the subtle design elements, the little details and little fiddly things were only additions to the overall read. And here it's flipped. The overall bigger shapes that are readable that you can boil down to the napkin test are still there, right? But the design, because it's a lot more intricate, is going to be a lot more balanced in between the subtleties rather than the boldness of the big simple. Hey, Weeping Jay, how's it going? Frox, best of luck. You'll, you'll do great. Keep it up. Did that make sense? I hope it made sense. Um, So that's why it's a lot more trickier, this design to get done correctly in a shorter amount of time, because there's a lot of um, small shapes that are paired with bigger shapes. And the bigger shapes are quite simple, but the, the, the weight of the design lies on the smaller details than the bigger details. But because like I said, you could explain the design like a puck with a guy underneath, right? But there's a lot more to it. So that's, for example, if you're going to do a design, 
if you're going to go by the principle of the, like the napkin test, like I, I mentioned in the lecture, was that uh, you know you got to find that sweet spot where where noise versus um, information where you should you should reduce less or add more and uh, so on and so forth is where where that that is not a, like any design you can do good job or a bad job regardless of complexity of the design you know like a, a lot of for example a lot of concept art for transformers where yeah, the earlier movies were way too chaotic, right? The, the cleanliness of the concepts were really hard to read what's happening in the concept, but it looked fantastic. But what they had to do in the movies afterwards is to scale down the com complexity and make it a lot cleaner to read. Uh, so, so it's all about communicating the idea correctly uh, if you're going to make an illustration, so in this instance, if you if it's just an illustration, it's the relationship between the shapes and, and placement and composition and so on. But if it's a design thing that you should, you know, like be able to walk around or or play as or interact with, you have to design it more of like a product, and that's where napkin test comes into play where in compared to illustration because the napkin test doesn't apply to illustration illustration is a different beast but it still com still complies to the um, like readability at part of the lecture hierarchy and shapes and values and, you know all these things This is the time traveler with multiple paths of time you can go and observe. Ow! <laughs> How's it going, Captain Baus? My one man wolf pack right there. I hope everything is good. Zealin. <laughs> yeah, that is like in thumbnailing it's extremely important to throw a wide net at the at the very early days and really push and really exaggerate um, the output. You know, like if you're gonna do an illustration of action, what crazy action can you make? Make the movements bigger, make the camera angle tilted smoke debris blah 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 and then you know do a few of those and then you see oh this has some this has a better balance than the other ones why do i like this so much then you start kind of breaking it down under trying to understand where you're going to take it the next step where you you refine the sketch right so you start exploring what's in there and, and in, it's making the composition stronger but i as the further up you move in the like pyramid, right, of refinement, uh, the less you can adjust it, and the less and less steps you're going to be able to take in order to make it work. And sometimes you're going to go a step back, rework, and then take a step up again and refine the, the information. Uh, sometimes you know you can notice this when you're trying to save a painting. Where you just keep redrawing and redrawing and redrawing, and it's like, ah, oh, I don't, I, this head is not correct, or I'm not, why does it look wrong? And sometimes you just gotta go, all right, it's wrong. Uh, remove big part of the image or redraw the image, and restart, and don't try to save it, and try to kind of understand why you enjoyed the original thumbnail and redraw it one more time 
or be bold and make massive decisions about the the piece you're trying to work up and what's what's breaking it and don't try to save it you know just let it die could help a lot of times you know When we're back to the napkin test uh, comment, like that's where the concept designer and illustrator uh, uh, separate how you approach a design. Captain Boat, you won't go to work today? Nice. So you got a Zealin, yeah, exactly. So when you're doing something and you're trying to refine the idea of something, you have to make like in your mind Rollomancer, exactly. So in your mind when you're doing like these thumbnails for illustrations you gotta consider, like make a shopping list of the image, what's important. Who is the, what's the main story? Uh, antagonist, protagonist, maybe. Is the sense, what's the sense that you wanna convey? Action, fear, loneliness, um, hostility, whatever. Whatever it is, make that clear and then you go crazy. These are the image ideas I had of a, of let's say, of a guy finding a, a, a massive, massive old tree. Right? Then you have to consider. Okay, if I want to present that idea to someone, how, in what way am I best able to present the idea of um, scale, right? The guy and the tree and is the guy scared proud uh, stumbled on it all these things can also be woven into light direction texture uh, mood uh, color texture so you guys then start okay I know these things I have in my mind okay I want him to be just find it. it should invoke hope scale so you start sketching something that feels big how can i make it feel big is it uh, i'm a little guy looking up at a massive tree or am i a little guy walking to the side of the tree so we see represented as a massive tree and a little person for scale you know scale obviously in this instance would matter because we want to make sure it comes off as big so in what way can we make something feel big? Is it the details around the tree? Is it the framing? Is it the colors? Is it env environmental fogging? You know, so you have to start breaking these things down and understand what is being communicated in, in what way. And that has to be done in thumbnail stage. You should not do that. You shouldn't figure that out <laughs> towards the end of the illustration. Right. You should try to break it down and be tangible and communicate, be able to communicate that early. Because framing or color or these things can absolutely change the way someone perceives your painting. And if you don't incorporate that from day one of the sketch, you're most likely going to struggle and you're going to have to scramble to make it work. But that's also okay. As long as you get the idea of what is required, you'll get a stronger path. But you have to break it down. You have to understand what you want to communicate rather than I'm just going to try to make it work or make 
a safe explanation where everything is in the mid ground and there's no depth there's no there's no tension there's no hue shifts there's no value shifts uh, everything is just a over explained the image itself gets boring like the old classic masters you know they didn't do extreme camera angles and so on but they put all the emphasis on light or colors or or like the complexity was a lot more one dimensional and subtle so it requires a lot more mastery and you can get away with a lot more by exaggerating uh, if you don't have the mastery of the the trade so you got to make sure that you, you communicate and push through what you want to communicate. Make it very clear and very, uh, you know, you know. Hey, Amir, how's it going? Welcome to the end. Travis, how's it going? Oh, Miguel, you will be posting it? That's cool. Nice. Looking forward to that. Sadly, I didn't have time. I My daughter is still not okay, so I can't. Hopefully, if you guys want me at a later point, I will join in. Yeah, but I, 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 I wouldn't have been able to. Um... Let's find someone to read. Let's try to, to slay Tim Remmers. So we're going to raid Tim Remmers. Like I said, he raided us yesterday. He's a great artist. Uh, the, their own company. He's the boss. He's a ZBrush fantastic sculptor. See you guys tomorrow morning. Thanks for the topic of a time traveler. Um, today was a lot messier sketch but I think I got it in the end in terms of idea. Um, but anyways have a good one. Good night. Have a great day. Stay safe out there. Don't cough in people's faces. <laughs> Don't inhale coughs. Anyways have a good one. Toodles.